All right. <clears throat> So today's class is about mass resisting. Right. So I see few of the new joiners here, and I also feel uh, it's we might we'll revise a bit before we get into this topic because this is the most confusing topic of uh, lithosphere. <clears throat> so we have to be very clear with the concepts. Fine. So before we go mass resisting, I think have a I think we have discussed this earlier about something called let's revise on exogenic processes. Okay. This is one of the exogenic processes. Right? I want to just revise this because it happened it, it will be revision for you. Many who have heard of it, but also it has a relevance with this mass resisting. So as you seen, exogenic process is an is a process happening outside, right, on the surface of the earth, thanks to atmosphere and ultimately thanks to the sun. So, what is this exogenous process? Exogenic process is a denudational process. Remember, right? Endogenic process which builds the surface, which uplifts the surface from inside, and exogenic process something smoothens the surface in general. There are exceptions where exogenic process also leads to building the surface. Building the sense it removes uh, contents from one place location, builds at the other location. Right? Fine. Uh, this exogenic processes, we know what is the reason for exogenic processes because of stress. because of stress causing in earth materials that is the triggering point for exogenic processes what is exogenic processes we saw already weathering one then erosion sorry now mass resting later erosion these are the exogenic processes these all processes are due to stress forming in the earth materials now question is before we get into this exogenic processes in detail, we need to know who, what is the actor, who are the players which causing stress. We saw one of the thing is gravity, right? Which causes things to move, right? Right? For example, we are all preparing for UPSC or APSC exams, it is we are moving, right? We're not sleeping, we are moving. So moving in the sense we are putting an effort over. It's it does cause stress. It may be because of like ambitions or parental guidance or whatever the reason may be. So this is one of the reasons for gravity to cause stress in the materials. Other is we saw. Molecular, right? Hope you people revise and remember this, right? Molecular stress. So, molecular stress is all about what? It's about how the water is solving the chemical bonds between the minerals, right? Loosening up the rocks, breaking the rocks from within. This is molecular stress. Why is very important, right? If the mass wasting is very much one and only due to gravity. One and only. This is the this is the very if you want to remember any word from mass wasting, you should always remember it is one and only due to gravity. This is the greatest trap will be set. For example, for simply because it doesn't align with our common sense. I'll tell you, uh, I'll give an example. Um, so typically what we do, uh, continue this statement, uh, typically what we do, mass listing, let me class this, fine. Exogenic process is always due to causing of stress in the materials, that is stress is due to gravity or molecular uh, stress. 
molecular stresses of both chemical reactions and this this kind of stress like crystallization or solution this kind of stuff which we are not mass wasting is not all of it it's all only of both gravity so let's say so what is this mass wasting so this is a ground surface as a slope this is a ground surface right and then this is a rock this is a rock bed rock bed fine and on this there are weathered rock and broken rock remember it's a continuous process there will be like solid rock on top of rock bed there will be weathered rock i hope you remember i gave the examples of nandi hills there is a rock bed on the line and on the rock bed you can see the chunks of rocks falling here and there X is called exfoliation. Hope you remember. Right. Exfoliation is largely due to physical right, weathering, these kind of things. Hope you remember those two concepts. So now, this gravity, right? The gravity act. It doesn't matter for gravity, right? It is rock bed or this one. Doesn't matter as long as there's a slope and gravity, this entire system will move. This is all about mass wasting. Right? The entire rock bed and along with the weather materials will move down the slope. Right. So now this is what we understand. So how? But we should always read between the lines. Okay, read reading between the lines is very important because easily if you don't read between the lines, you really get confused. Question number one: right? Is weathering a prerequisite for mass wasting? Question is: Is weathering prerequisite? Prerequisite means it is a necessary thing for mass wasting. Answer is no. why it is not because conceptually we understand mass wasting is only all about gravity right and gravity doesn't only uh, only about act on rock bed but also it work, uh, works on even the weather materials right for erosion means the water air to carry the rock from one place to another weathering is required right weathering is required to mass wasting is about also about carrying rock materials from one place to other but due to gravity and gradient but not due to weathering so that's why only gravity so weathering is not at all a actor a prerequisite for mass wasting to carry the materials from one place to other so i hope you are clear on this right so next question <clears throat> next how about the agents like water air snow these are all required for carrying these are the tricky questions right carrying the mass wasting also no right we know gravity is the only the reason right only the reason so that means what happens water air snow are not the agents which move this rock bed from one place to another but in in fact it's the other way around this rock bed in fact will have within it the air water and snow which moves along with the rock getting it these agents doesn't move the rock these agents move along with the rock thanks to gravity fine so these are the prelim shall of course tomorrow i'll give notes But try to understand the concept. I mean, basic concept. You should be very clear with basic concepts. 
all right any questions on this and yeah of course how the rock bed will move okay of course next question is is weathering has no impact on mass wasting no impact no it does has impact why it has impact for example that again conceptually when will an a rock move right a rock sitting on the slope definitely a rock sitting on definitely it has it will it will stick to the surface and it will be offering re, uh, resistance right like this it will be offering resistance not to slope down right that means it will be pulling backwards right and the gravity will be pulling downwards if this force if this force is greater than resistance they call shear resistance shear means surface resistance this one if this force is greater than shear resistance that only the rock bed will move right in that case only the rock bed will move right this resistance will be more here or here one or two definitely one the resistance at location one will be great much much greater than resistance two right that means the weather materials are I mean the force is same right the force is same but resistance is low in case of two second for weather materials with the resistance between weather materials and weather. So that's what what happens this means the weather materials are prone to fast fast movements with respect to the rock bed rock bed might move very slowly but the weather materials might move very quickly right? mind you quickly means in the geographical sense not like our vehicles or buses move not that quickness i'm talking about relatively that quick okay and then rock bed sometimes might not move at all because simply the resistance may be equal to force quite possible that time only the weather materials move so that's why there is an impact of weather materials impact in the sense of uh, speed in which it can velocity in which it can move but definitely weather materials is not a necessary condition for mass wasting i hope i am clear on this right i'll take a pause any questions i hope you are clear of this right the rock bed the weather materials are there it's only the gravity which acts to create stress in the rock bed which moves the rock bed which moves the materials down the slope right weathering has is not a prerequisite condition for the mass wasting to happen but yes it definitely has an impact impact in the sense that it it causes uh, swiftness speed in movement of the mass wasting and then what is this agent what is this agent agent has an impact in the mass wasting no definitely no in fact is the other way around the mass wasting carries air water snow along with it they also become part of the rock bed which moves along with them <clears throat> now this is the most crucial answer. so what it so why are we studying this mass wasting right. one of the mass wasting is landscape i'll come to the detailed uh, types of mass wasting everything to to have the in the context to speak in the context right any geographical concept we should know like how it how it is relevant to the human beings let's take about landslide landslide is due to mass wasting right so now it's easy to trick you any individual by upsc here right usually what we see in the pictures right in the in the newspaper pictures and all you see landslide happening in very 
rainy places and what will be our uh, obvious observation or what appears to be our common sense is it is the water which loosened the soil and the water pushed the upper layer of the mud down the soil right now there is a contradiction right we say landslide is mass wasting and we say mass wasting is only due to gravity but what i am seeing in the videos of landslide of picture is the water is bringing down the mud or water is bringing down the layer of the rock materials down along with it right that means water as an agent which is actually moving the materials right and there is a disconnect here one the conceptually we are saying that water is not an agent which moves the materials other than the way i'm seeing that the videos of the landslide is not matching right hope we are getting so we need to solve this puzzle so how do how it is how it is working so to solve this puzzle we need to understand a concept called uh, overloading is called overloading right uh, pay attention please so overloading is very important so what is this overloading all about for example for instance right there is a slope right there is a slope there is an rock sitting on it right there is a rock sitting on it and it has some resistance right it has a resistance and it that resistance is equal to downward gravitational force so if resistance is equal to force then what happens it rises there only it doesn't even uh, slide down the slope so overloading is due to due to heavy rain rain what happens what happens if what happens if heavy rain falls on this right this rock will get overloaded with water or if there is soil it will have chances of overloading much higher because soil absorbs more water so once it gets overloaded right then the force will become higher right right if you drop a feather and if you drop a stone right which falls on you a stone right because stone is very heavier feather will go very light it comes down the fall same way if the rock is sitting where the force is greater than resistance and if you put water on it right it gets heavily overloaded right due to this overloading the the gravity effect will be higher and be, and it will reach to a reach a point where the gravity is crosses the resistance force and just the rock start sliding down the contrary contrary to our assumption that the water will somehow flow down here right it might loosen up it might loosen up the resistance it might become slippery we might think of this in imagination right like for example we always relate the to water to a slippery if water is fallen on the uh, floor if someone moves up all the chances are getting slipped but that may be the reason may be a reason but it is not the primary reason and it has like 1 to 2% of the effect in causing the mass wasting it's very 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 rare right? because imagine it's the rock has been sit on a surface for centuries and centuries together and there is no i mean see for example if that is a case right even a slight rainfall would have caused mass wasting it is not the case only in the case of heavy heavy rainfall only 
such things happen. Why? Right. Maybe because of it, more water comes down the slope and it might loosen up the resistance force, but that is not the primary reason. The more primary reason is this water overloads the rock. It's overloads the rock. Maybe the water might get collected here. It starts pushing down. Overloaded or in the top. Right? Rock means it might not be the spray, right? It is something like this shape. And water gets collected here, 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 here. And then it starts pushing on the rock. Right? So be clear with this. So I'll give a related example. I think if anyone are <clears throat> of aware, if you read there, the Uttarakhand floods in 2013. If I'm not wrong, there was a Hindi movie made on this as well. <clears throat> so this Uttarakhand floods was the same reason. I know there was cloud brushed, there was breakage of the dam, and then the heavy rush, gush of water came into the thing. It doesn't mean that this, this water, though it is primarily we can see that, okay, this water is coming very forced and it is pushing down the rocks down the hill, weakening its resistance, that is true. But what happened? That was facilitated. See, due to the heavy rains in the entire area, right? That was the primary reason was the rains overloaded rock, soils, everything. And uh, before the breakage of the dam, it, it created that perfect scenario for a mass wasting. And all it need was a little push. And the little push was given by the breakage of the dam and the water which came down the, both the rocks down the hill. Had it been only the breakage of the rocks, the impact would have not been so much. So we need to understand this thing. So because we, as an aspirant, we might go into those areas where we might tackle disaster uh, management, such kind of thing, departments. And we need to understand what is the primary reason for anything, right? Root cause, they call it root cause analysis. So for instance, like, so if anyone is in poverty, what is the root cause analysis? So, so for poverty means you do your lack of food and shelter. Either you work very hard daily, like 16, 17 hours, do manual labor, building construction worker, and me try to get some 500, 600 amount per day, and that will solve the problem. That is, but again, your poverty as a situation is not solved from the root cause. This every poor person knows. That's why every poor person wants his children to get educated. That is the root cause to, to solve this poverty entirely. Right? Education helps for the generations to come out of poverty. I think it's yes, some voice.
Oh, sorry. Uh, I muted all, and I, I think I muted everyone, okay, including myself. Okay. So what I'm telling was technically there was three types of mass resting: slow movements, rapid movements, and static. So these are the questions we usually ask, like two uh, decade or two decades ago, like explain mass resting, like just a theoretical. But now the trend is like you need to understand the relevance, the reality part of it. The Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand, South Uttarakhand. Why? How are we able to relate the basic concept to the what's happening in actual sense? They talk about landslides. Right? Okay, so next question is these are three types. Let's get into three types tomorrow because each type has its own uh, discussion. Before that, we'll close the class with the reasons for mass testing. Like what exactly triggers? Gravity is fine. Like one of the examples we saw loading, right? Overloading. That's one of the types which actually triggers mass testing, means the to which supports gravity to bring about mass testing to to overcome the resistance, the sharing resistance of the rocks. So are there any other uh, thing which helps with gravity to overcome the sharing uh, resistance? Yes, there are many. One is, uh, first of all, you remove the support. Remove support from below. There's mostly human interference. Right. We tend to carve in, cave in the rocks. Okay, in for example, this archaeological department, right? They tend to cave in the rocks to see what's inside. Right, in that way, the support is removed. Right, and there's the reduction in resistance, and then the gravity will act more on, builds on the system. Or, like any tribal people might just want to do make constructs of home for themselves in the caves, right? Or like mostly development activities, mining, etc. Uh, next is increase in gradient. Yes. Now question is how to remove support which reduces the resistance. Now how do you increase the gradient to increase the gravity? Right. So first it will be like this. A rock. I start cutting down here and there's a gradient is formed. So more gravitational force, more able to landslide. Maybe I'll cut down because I have to construct a home on top. Right. I want to construct the home. I might cut down a few other slope and make it more gradient for the rocks to pass on the home smoothly. So this kind of happen. People will not be aware of all the geological aspects and they tend to construct the house on the hills, right? And uh, this might result like this. Uh, next is overloading we saw, like due to heavy rainfall and everything. And then uh, overloading also, like someone may construct a home on top of this, right? And it gets overloaded, the rock might slip down. And then uh, <clears throat> earthquakes, yes, definitely. Earthquakes loosen up the uh, rock and the, the resistance will be lost, right? And then there's a natural seepage. Natural seepage is the same thing, I told that the water might constantly keep flowing for generations together, right? And that might result in losing of the resistance. Uh, next is uh, heavy drop down. What happens? Dehradun. Remember, uh, this dunes. Dunes means once there are lakes on the hill. So what happens? In dunes, what happens? Himalayas especially. Uh, there will be like Himalayas. Right? And there will be like Something like this. Sometimes when Indian geography will talk about this. Upper, higher, lower Himalayas, higher Himalayas. The water flows down, right? Because of snow or rainfall. And there will be some structure here which stops and the water gets collected here. Right? There will be like glacial lakes, they call. Big lakes. For a period of time, this will break and everything will drain down. What happens here? I empty fertile land because of all the sediments which have been here, right? There's a land for people to settle. That may be, right? So that will become a dune. 
that's why it's called dehradun fine uh, so what happens if they're heavy drop down like this it brings in all the what happens there will be more gradient right water will keep flow more gradient more gradient and then many of the rocks here this one what about the one which was topping what happens it falls down right that's the gradient that are talking about and of course the removal of natural vegetations right we cut down the trees and that will lose on the that will uh, lose on the resistance right and uh, three types i spoke about it we, tomorrow we'll talk about heave slow fast what are the types of this uh, let's see what is heave what is slow what is fast so i'll share this uh, video today i'll end this uh, chat uh, if you have time again you can refer to this video okay uh, any questions before we wind up?